Coast to Coast. Yep, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LOVE 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. Oh, thank God I can do that ramp in my sleep. You know what would be nice, Adam, is if we yeah. explain to our guests what our show is all about before we throw open the mics. Well, I'm trying to go. Uh, 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 uh. I'm just happy nice? you're an addiction specialist. I got some questions. Shani <laughs> Smith is our uh, guest tonight. You know her uh, from her uh, role in uh, Becker. She's uh, she's uh, Ted's uh, assistant, Linda. And uh, Becker, 930 Monday nights, uh, CBS on its uh, third or fourth season. Third. Almost, almost home to syndication. Oh, we're so close. Yeah, that is good times. Yeah. Because that's it. That's, yeah. You just start doing heroin full time. That's right. <laughs> Go to the mailbox. As long as you can get to the mailbox and hammer those checks, you're fine. That is uh, <laughs> that is good times. Also, uh, Shawnee was in uh, Armageddon. What was your role in uh, Armageddon? Are you ready? I'm glad you're sitting down. I was bimbo at the bar. On my trailer, I got there that morning, and I had a little piece of tape on the trailer that said bimbo. Nice. <laughs> At the bar that the Ow! guys from yeah. the uh, Roughnecks from uh, Armageddon like went to before they headed no, out? It was that big montage where they were collecting the um, big strapping guys that went out into space. And yeah. <laughs> Steve Buscemi I was, was telling me my diamond was fake. That's the part... Uh, that's the part of uh, you those for? <laughs> ensemble movies I like when they go out and get the experts. Yeah. <laughs> and and here's the thing about the guys, you know, it's like he's he's drunk, he's antisocial, he's in jail right now, <laughs> but he's the best goddamn demolition man there is, yeah. and we reliable. work with him. He's reliable. We work with him, so we got to go. And after get that him. moment with the bimbo at the bar, he's going to go into space, and be a hero. <laughs> Steve Buscemi can throw knives. We got to go get him. <laughs> Ever since the Dirty Dozen uh, laid the groundwork for this sort of ensemble, everyone's good. Of bad guys. Yeah, there's never one guy who's good at two things yeah. where one guy could be eliminated. Hey, I can throw knives and do demolition. Or, or Herb, good, you're out. Good guys and nice guys and nope, bad guys. No, nope, they're just bad antisocial guys. They put them all together, put them in a rocket ship. they got a mission to do, and they got to come together to do it. All right, so also uh, Leaving Las Vegas, which was uh, a great movie. Yeah. True. Did you see either one of these movies we're talking about? No, <laughs> no, no he you has didn't. kids. <laughs> he didn't. But I, I say this to Drew all the time. There is a list as long as a, a landing strip at LAX of movies that Drew has not seen. <laughs> right. One of them being The Shining, right. which is a what? Mo- which, yeah. yeah, that's what oh I. That's what I say. God. And I, I love The Shining, and I say to Drew, and no one understands this, but I go, "You're very lucky." And everyone goes, what are you talking about? Because I've seen The Shining eight times and I can't really enjoy it anymore because I know exactly what's going to happen at at each turn. Drew, you could get yourself a nice bottle of red wine, a tub of popcorn, a DVD of The Shining, and sit home one one Saturday night and really enjoy that movie for the first time. I would have to be, though, literally a millionaire like you and sit in a home theater that I have. I I don't have anything like that. You don't have a home theater? No, No. What do you got? TV. You got a TV that also has an eight-track player in it yeah, or something. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, that's bad. You time. don't spend much know, time at DVD. home, do you? <laughs> what? What? You don't have a DVD? My lord. Jesus. That the is hell's sad. the matter with got you? Tebow. <laughs> I was cruising a uh, Salvation Army thrift store yesterday, and I haven't been in a thrift shop in a while. And uh, you know you're getting old when you're going to the computer section oh. in the thrift store. Oh, wow. And you're seeing, you know, DVD <laughs> and laser disc and junked equipment like we would have seen. The, the equivalent to this would have been like a Victrola yeah. or an old 8-track or something we would have stumbled across uh, yeah. 15, 20 years ago. Wow. There are actually uh, tons of VCRs. There are tons of uh, DVDs. There's like a, com- there's a whole computer section in thrift stores now. That's nuts. Yeah, it means you're getting old. Yeah. Ouch. Didn't go to the hovercraft section, but... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, Shani, uh, are you ready? Yo, you, do you know? Do you know the show? Do you know how the show works? Yeah, of course I do. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, that's good. You've you've heard it on the radio or seen yeah. it on the TV? Yes. Okay. All the above. Oh, great. All right. Well, let's. Uh, we pretend to solve people's that's sexual right. problems. That's us. We're actors, right? Playing people who care. It's <laughs> exactly right. Alex, yeah. you're twenty. What's up? 
Um, I got this girlfriend that I've been dating for a while, and she's now currently living with me. And come to find out through my cousin's girlfriend, she has a friend that works with this girl. Come to find out the girl's like somewhere between 29 and 31. How old are you? 20. And what did you think she was? She told me she was 19 when we first started going out. <laughs> wow. And you, you, you couldn't figure that one out? Off by a decade? She doesn't even look like she's barely 18. Huh. Yeah. All right. I guess she's blessed or something. I don't know. She's a keeper. So what's the problem? <laughs> Sounds like you're in luck. Yeah. Uh, no, she's like turning bipolar on me is what she's doing. What does that mean to you? She's like going crazy. She's getting obsessive and... All chicks are crazy. No, not like her. What does like, she do? Within wow. the last two months, she's been controlling all my phone calls. My cellular phone, she checks all the messages I get on there. My internet, she checks all the emails I get. Yeah. She checks all the messages on my page. And, and what is it that she believes you're doing that she needs to check on? She thinks I'm cheating on her or something. Have you ever cheated before? Not on her. Not there's. I mean, there's nothing about my past that she needs to know about or does know about. Have you cheated on her before? No, never. Okay. We've only been together for maybe five months. I see. And did you say you're living together? Yeah, she, I, she moved in with me about two months ago. Yeah. And then come to find out about two, three weeks ago, I found out, you know, that... Her age is not what she told me. Right. Was. Well, when you went to the mailbox, saw that social security check in there, <laughs> you were immediately alerted to her real age. Well, I mean... Tripped over a walker on the way to the mailbox. Medicare EOBs. <laughs> <laughs> the Meals on Wheels van was out there honking the horn. All right. Detective Alex. Alex, why'd you move in? You didn't know anything about her. No, no, no. She moved in with me. All right. Okay, why... Because she was living with her sister... Oh, all right. Well, that explains it. That explains it. it. Yeah. I lived with my sister once. It means we got to move in together, too, Alex. <laughs> she was living with her sister and her sister and her sister's, her brother-in-law, they kicked her out. Why? She, That's a good question to ask. D that is. I mean, I don't know the full story. They say it was like, oh, she wasn't uh, helping out around or nothing. Is she a drug addict? No. I mean, she's totally clean. She works, she does school, during, she works at a school during the day. Doing, doing what? Her job is like children's services or something. I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Listen. She's like going crazy. All right, Alex. Yeah. You, you need to lay the law down with her, and I, and she possibly needs to move out. I need to pull a bullet in her head or something. All right. Well, fair enough. <laughs> no. Whatever it's going to take. Alex, look, look. You just just set some limits. Be firm. And All if right. it doesn't work out, then the relationship hey, doesn't work. Listen, if you're not doing anything wrong, then you just uh, lay the law down. But don't backpedal. But okay. enjoy the sex while she's there. And don't get violent and aggressive. That, that's ridiculous. Well, that, I mean... She, she, right. she doesn't Who deserve cares? that either. I, you know, well, I get strong a-hole vibe. Off Alex? <laughs> yeah. Why, just because he wants to put a bullet in his girlfriend's head? Because she's checking he's a guy. His, his cell phone? <laughs> yeah. Five months, he's feeling the pressure. <laughs> Yeah, listen, there's not Shani's a... Shani's a little bitter here. <laughs> 20, uh... Oh, she's accurate. I'm a realist. She's... Yeah, very accurate. <laughs> yeah, what happened to you, baby? Who let you down? <laughs> with her not Everyone three... since Daddy and the Disney movies. <laughs> We've been here for three minutes with her. We already got the whole vibe going. <laughs> yeah. But she's a realist. I'll give her that. Hey, it makes life good when you know what the game is. Did you do uh, Politically Incorrect with my uh, Emmy Award winning partner, yes. Jimmy Kimmel? Yes. Yeah, Jimmy. I was talking to him tonight. He said, you're a real handful. A real ball of fire. He, he likes you. He's pretty funny. Yeah, he, he liked you, too. <laughs> so you're cute and you're funny. Andrea? Yeah? You're 15. I'm 16. That's Why right. are you calling us? Okay, well, I had this sex ed class, and the teacher told me that, or she told the whole class that, if a guy fingered you with the slightest bit of semen on his hand, it was possible for you to get pregnant. I just want to know, is that true? Hello? Well, yeah. It just however, takes one. Yeah, however the semen gets there. But uh, most guys, since they walk around with semen on their hand, no, uh, are... are cause, okay, my boyfriend... What's happened? Um, my yeah. boyfriend, I stroked it for him, and he got some on his hand, but he wiped it off, and then he fingered me. Could it be possible that I might get pregnant from that? Well, I, look... Your your judgment about that, this, your, your assessment of that is as good as mine. This I mean, is something you have to bring up with your priest or rabbi. <laughs> you were stroking him. You got some you got some goo on your hand. Then he fingered you. <laughs> See, that's why when I'm with the ladies, I do this move. Where I take the hand, I put it in the opposite armpit, and I do that wipe move. It's a class uh, move. Do you make a fart, it, fart sound as it goes? It, sometimes it does on its own. It's never intentional. But it the, lets the ladies know that I, I care enough to wipe before I give them the finger. <laughs> Oh, Andrea. Well, at least, are you sexually active with him? Are you having sex with him? No. All right, so you know you're not ready for that. And it would be a sort of awful 
if you got pregnant sort of accidentally. Yeah, that would suck. Trying to be responsible. How long ago did this happen? Um, it was during New Year's. No, he listen. Happy it, New Year! It, well, <laughs> you can still get the morning after pill. Oh no, no, no! Listen, it's un- highly if, unlikely. If you got pregnant because this guy gave you the finger, uh, this child is going to be this is the next Messiah. I this, say he's a great a, guy if he shot his wad and he still fingered you. Yeah, <laughs> after the fact. That's a very valid point. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. He either either he's a wonderful guy or he has horrible self esteem. <laughs> One of prob- maybe both. Shani, are you channeling Adam Carolla? Or? <laughs> no, Shani is right because most guys, when they're done with that, that's that's it for the night. Well, especially at that age. Yeah, it's like it's like popping the batteries out of the remote. Yeah. you know, it's just it ain't it ain't there. It ain't working. Yeah. Right. Mm. Hey, Andrea. Yeah. All right, you're fine. Just uh, you do you carry uh, like some wet naps or something with you. <laughs> All right. Okay. That antibacterial hand. Boy, you're, now, when you're giving him the uh, hand, how long Excuse does it... it was called stroking. I stroking yeah. him stroking. off. Uh, how long does it take him? You were effective, obviously. Um, I don't know, like, a little bit more than 15 minutes, I guess. Wow. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty tiring. good. That's Persistent. De- decent technique, though, on your ha- behalf. I, I don't think... I've never been stroked off by another. <laughs> proud to say. <laughs> that's one the words of a love song. So. <laughs> I've never been stroked <laughs> off by another. No, my Just hand. Just do a like hole a fool. in the peach show. Just do a hole in the... My, uh... Stroked off by another. Feeling like, like a fool. <laughs> Loving both of you. Is, is breaking, breaking all the rules. <laughs> Excuse uh, me. I, uh... I, I don't uh, think someone else could do it. I think it would be too confusing for my penis. I'd, I wouldn't mind letting him try, but I, th- I think eventually I'd have to jump in. Maybe this could be the real, real thing for you. I mean, what maybe you mean? this been the real you, hand. Yeah, maybe this has been what you've been rehearsing for all these years. Yeah, you mean it, I could, I could you take could, my love of masturbation and actually, and, and your love of laziness and snapping and combine them, <laughs> right? So I could actually have an orgasm with my hands behind my head. Yes, interesting. Napping, interesting. Or on the remote. That's interesting. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that. wow! It baby. gets better. <laughs> Sarah, yeah, you're 19. Okay, I've got fibrocystic disease. Breast, breast yes. disease. Yeah, uh, you got those lumps in there. I don't have any right now, um, but my doctors told me to take vitamin E. Yeah, don't eat chocolate and watch your caffeine. Yeah, exercise, balance your diet. Yeah, and that's about it. That's getting. Hard. Um, that's the hard part. And, and you realize how common this is, right? No, I didn't. I was just wondering. It's My ex- grandmother was thinking that young people don't get it. No, they do, and it's extremely common. Are your periods irregular? I don't have them. I take Depo-Vera. Depo-Provera. Has that made the cyst worse or better? Um, I've never had them before, and I've been taking the Depo for over a year, and we decided that's not what it was from. Uh, it's possible it is, but, and before you started taking Depo, were your periods irregular? No, okay. not very well, not very regular. How tough is the diet? What What do you have to do with your diet? Well, I've also got fibromyalgia. <laughs> You, you uh. should kill yourself. What do you mean how tough? She can't have chocolate or caffeine. Let me tell you. I know. That, that's, that's tough. That's tough, but, but then she, she sort of intimated that it was even more. Let, let me give you a that. tip on fibromyalgia. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, that is a sleep disorder. And well, I'm starting to take melatonin. All right, but I'm telling you, you've got to focus on sleep hygiene. Uh-huh. Make sure you have adequate sleep. Make sure the kind of sleep you get is, is a proper. Uh, anyone who doubts that, try not getting sleep, even... Oh, I know. For about a, t- a couple of weeks and see how your bones ache. Sleep deprivation is not fun. Yeah, and, it, and you may be sleeping eight hours, but the kind of sleep may be not restorative and, and be such that it predisposes you to the fibromyalgia. So please uh, take a how look at that. How do you get rest? Proper sleep. It proper. depends what the cause of the, of the sleep disturbance is, whether or not it's you know, you're getting up and urinating frequently, you have a partner uh, that thrashes around all night, you're depressed, whatever it is, yeah. the sleep is disturbed. Vicodin and a bottle of red wine. <laughs> you're usually, you're, you're uh, too much alcohol. Usually 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 too much. Well, alcohol not enough. They told me you not to put it take. with the Vicodin. I now keep a flask in my pajamas. Yeah, sleeping pills will make it worse. That's what you told me to take. Like a little nip uh, in the But sometimes, the sometimes the... Melatonin. Sometimes, that's, that's a good advice, but sometimes some of the antidepressants that are sort of good for sleep hygiene are useful, like trazodone or serazone. Yeah. And, I've been uh, extremely unlucky in finding a good antidepressant. Hey. Did you try serazone? All yeah, right. Um, I've tried Wellbutrin, Remeron, uh, Depakote, Depakine. Yeah. I also have like a ton of problems. I have manic depression also. Yeah, I hear that. And, and manic and, 
And many depressives do get chronic fatigue and, and fibromyalgia real, real commonly. Baby, wow. you're 19, for Christ's sake. Try yeah, singing in a rock like, band. Yeah, huh? you, you need to find Jesus or be dipped in something no. or something. <laughs> I mean, my God. Or what do you do for fun? Cook, clean, take care of my cat, trying to get a job. You're Ooh. 19, right? Yes. You a big gal? I'm 180 pounds. Um, how tall are you? 5'5 five, five or 5'6. Five, You're right. fat. True, oh, please. Hey, hey. Oh. <laughs> Listen, it's funny. Whenever whenever I hear <clears throat> 10 to my cats, it's like I add 50 pounds <laughs> to whatever I was picturing. It's like, cha-ching. You have, uh, yeah, how many cats? Two cats? Oh, it's 100 pounds. Uh. 10 to the cats. Oh, but listen, let me tell you the cats uh, you should be tending to, the uh, nice young men at the local watering hole. Those are the cats you should be swinging with. Forget about your uh, men like your, you. your calico. When's the last time you had some fun besides um, cleaning and tending the kitty kids? I go out, but it's when I go out, my friends want to go out to clubs and drink, and they're not very supportive of everything. I get... You're an alcoholic? Huh? Supportive of everything, meaning your recovery? Yeah, they're, they're or? No, I mean, she doesn't. That I can't keep up with them. Oh, I see. Mm. Maybe you should try drinking more. <laughs> no. Yeah, sometimes you got to break through. You hit that wall, you got to keep pushing. That's what I did. I drink to that. <laughs> All right, Sarah. Hey, listen, baby, you're 19. Stay, whip it up a little bit, would you? All right. I have to say, though, as you get older, like, your living gets better. Yeah. So, you know... Well, you, like give it time. You know what living's Maybe. like? It's like traveling. You know, your first couple of trips to the airport, and you get on the plane, and you don't know where your uh, your eye shade is, and you forgot your earplugs, and you didn't bring your oh, little portable Adam, CD boy. player. Oh, and Adam. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh the trauma. Yeah. Oh, my God. You can now, handle I, I really, I went from not knowing, you know, which one was my ticket and where it was and wh what what I should check and what I shouldn't check to getting the captain of the plane to sort through my uh, mixed nuts and pick out the peanuts. Uh, <laughs> True story. True story. You are an asshole. Yes. He uh, actually separated the uh, pretzel sticks from the uh, smoked almonds for me. That's quite a move up. <laughs> I'll tell you, talk about a learning well curve. Yeah, it's only been a few years. I'm proud of myself. But uh, life is that way, too. It's true. Yeah. You, you, yeah. No, like, like, here's what I want to say to everybody. Get a can opener that feels good in your hand. It, it's worth it. You, you know what I mean? They make those buck ninety nine can openers that hurt your hands when you use them and use them five times you a know, week when I you're 19. I totally, totally agree with Drop you. Drop six bucks on the er ergonomic ones with the yeah. big fat black uh, plastic no. handle on it. It is the quality of life in those tiny moments. Yeah. You know, uh, buy, go ahead and buy yourself uh, three or four uh, nail clippers. Throw one in the car. You'll never be everywhere. without. They're That's 99 right. cents. Oh, so true. Buy an extra stick of deodorant and toss that in the trunk of the car, too. Do you know what I mean? Live it Throw up a the little. the cats in the microwave. That's right. Put the cats in the microwave <laughs> and put the nail clippers in the glove box and live it up. It does. It takes... I, I'm going to write a book on how to live. <laughs> uh, Go ahead. From the comfort and safety of my own basement. Everyone listen to me. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's something that... like I drove a truck for many years that needed to be bump started. I had to push it every morning. Yep. The uh, cranks on the windows were broken off. The windows were half up. I had to use a pair of vice grips to get the windows up and down. That guy lived in the valley where it was... Yeah, thank yeah. God it was 100 and, yeah. 115 <laughs> in the summer and uh, 22 degrees during the winter. It really worked out for me. <laughs> the, the point is, is, it took many years for me to realize I needed a car that actually had cranks on it and that I could turn a key and it would start. And, and, and same, like I said, with the can opener. Go ahead, everybody. Treat yourself right. Well, there's a thing, though, with women. Like, we're not, like, men aren't allowed to express their feelings. Women aren't allowed to enjoy indulge. themselves, have fun, indulge. And uh, it takes, you what know, is that? it's kind what of. What is that? No, no, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's at the spa all the time? Well, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Here's the problem with women, as is, is I see it. I'm sure our last caller Dude, you're has not allowed been to indulge to a in spa mecha yet. mechanical stuff. No, here's, here's, the tool, problem. Tools. Here's, here's the problem. Here's the problem with women. I'm talking about fun. There are. I'm talking about doing what gets you off and having well, no. Well, that is true. They, they about don't. It. They don't. They don't do that as much. One of the problems is is if they. That's what does it for you. Women don't like their own, so they got no one to have fun with. And then there's guys, and guys don't like hanging out with them, so they're screwed. They, you, they don't have buddies. See what I mean? If women see guys have a good time, because here's what guys do: they want to blow off some steam, they want to have a good time. They get ten of them together and they go play paintball. 
and they, they scream for three hours out in some field shooting each other. They have a great time. Oh, hell, they just go play ditch. Women don't do that. Just go do ditch. Yeah, women pick up the phone and complain about the other friend of theirs who ain't on the line. But here's the thing about women I've thought about in the spa. There, There's the 95% of women who should go to the spa who don't, and then there's the 5% who go all the time and always talk about why they need to go again, when really the only thing they're tired from is driving back from the spa. <laughs> Are you dating someone who goes to a spa a lot? <laughs> yes, I've always dated women who go to the spa a lot. Well, there's your problem. And they'll sit around, too, and it's funny. People don't go to the spa. When women go to the spa, they feel as if they need to justify it a little bit. They yeah. go... Oh man, I couldn't. This holiday season has been. I couldn't. <laughs> first, first it was uh, grinding of the nutmeg, and uh, then I put a, a wreath on the door, and that I that mistletoe need, really wore me out. I need the spa. <laughs> you never hear guys talking about needing to go to the spa unless something happened, like they rolled their jeep or something like that. But wait a minute, what kind of man's man wants to go have like? No. Go to a spa. Come on. They don't. They don't. But I, I, I do agree with Shani that you women need to love each other a little more, get uh, together in a group, a that. and go out and have a good that. time. No, it is. It I, is because let me tell you something about having fun and blowing off steam. Right. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a, 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 an amazing example of having fun okay. and blowing off steam. Bring it on. This weekend. Mm-hmm. Here's what I got going for myself. This mm-hmm. coming weekend. Oh, this, this coming the weekend. Motocross. I have. The auto show oh, God. on Friday night, and then Saturday <laughs> it's the Super Bowl of motocross in Anaheim. <laughs> Tickets still available. Now, I'm going to pack uh, up a car full of my uh, idiot buddies from Oy. the valley, and we're humping it out to Anaheim, and we're going to go chug some beers and watch these guys try to kill themselves on their dirt bikes. And it's going to be the greatest time ever. I got a boner for it already. Humans, three days in humans advance. were not meant to have that, that much fun. <laughs> Humans weren't meant for that. No, you're a chick, You're absolutely Drew. right, Jim. See, Drew doesn't understand this because he's a chick. <laughs> and he don't get it up for guy stuff. Cause okay, he's really, man. He's really a woman, man. I mean, gal. Because he doesn't understand it. And what will your chicks be doing while you guys are at the motocross? We don't care. They're going to be individually sitting in their own crappy places and complaining that we're out. Okay, will Which you give you me their phone numbers before do. you go? Yes, you women need to band together and go out and have a good time yourselves. <laughs> See? See, Drew, if your wife would go out and have some fun with her chick friends, then maybe you could get out and have some fun with your guy friends. Because you don't really have any guy friends. You're just a bunch of uh, guys with ascots talking about this <laughs> day trading and things like that. The opera. I'm telling you, I'm so pumped up about this auto show and the Super Bowl of motocross. I mean, it's like a one-two. Yeah, I noticed you didn't invite me to the auto show. That's something I would have liked. Where, would you go? I'm not going to town. Sorry. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, there. good times. Buddy. Appreciate it. All right, we're going to take ourselves a uh, little break. Uh, Shani Smith is our uh, guest tonight from Becker. CBS, oh, uh, Monday nights, uh, 9.30. We're going to take ourselves a little break, and we'll be back after this. Yep, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Parola. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Shawnee Smith is our guest tonight. She's from Becker. 9.30, Monday nights, CBS. One more seri- one more uh, season, and uh, they're into syndication, and uh, that is uh, good times. I did want to say, actually, uh, talking about this uh, super <laughs> super cross, and uh, Jeremy McGrath, the uh, king of super cross, is going to be in. He was going to be in <laughs> yesterday, and uh, settle over there, baby. But uh, now he's going to come in next week because I got a whole bunch of uh, whole bunch of uh, dates over in Anaheim. But I'm going to be at uh, the uh, Anaheim Stadium coming up. What do they call it now? It's not the Anaheim Stadium anymore. It's the Edison, Edison Field. Yeah. yeah. The Edison Field uh, this Saturday. I'll be the drunk guy with uh, my shirt pulled up, showing everyone my boobs. As long as you're having a good time. Oh, I love that. Yikes. I love it. I love it. I'll go, I get in the pit area and I start uh, talking to the head mechanic about the bikes and stuff and bugging him, <laughs> <laughs> driving everyone nuts, drinking beer. Oh, it's great. I love it. I had my first mosh pit the other night. Where, where what show were you at? My own. Oh, you a were five dollar hoe. You were uh, you were on stage and the pit was yeah. moshing. Oh, yeah. I thought you were in the mosh pit. No, I've been there too. <laughs> that wasn't as pleasant. Where were you playing? <laughs> At the gig on Melrose. Where the hell is that? It's on, on Melrose. Uh, yeah, on Melrose. <laughs> in like what? La Brea. Yeah. How is uh-huh. it? Oh, let's talk. Uh, well, give your band a plug. Uh, I have a band called Five Dollar Hoe, spelled phonetically. 
F Y D O L L A H O. Uh huh. And uh, and Johnny, if you're running tonight, stop. You're sick. Because we're playing a House of Blues on Sunday. Oh, really? Yeah, at 9.30. This Sunday? This Sunday at House of Blues. Tickets still available. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tickets available. Well, wow, that's great. <laughs> but, yeah, I had my first mosh pit. and. Uh, How did you get the mosh pit going? Well, it just started... It just started going, but it so happens that a girlfriend I went to junior high with was the head cocktail waitress, and I was ready to, like, you know, really rile everybody up, and she started trying to, like, like definitely tone everybody down and tell them to stop. So being the non-competitive female that I am, right. I didn't encourage it. Huh. But uh, it was pretty, it was definitely a momentous occasion. Do we assume there might be some moshing going on at the House of Blues on oh, Sunday? Oh, I'm sure House of Blues, it's got a, a reputation for... For mosh pits. It's the mosh capital <laughs> of the strip there. All right. I think, uh, actually, we're going to hear a uh, snippet from uh, one of your songs at some point in the show. I don't know if it's uh, now. I know Anderson was yelling something in your ear, Drew. Which that was, we'll hear a snippet. Oh, okay. The transvi- transvestite hooker song, maybe. Yeah. You, you want to hear You want to hear some of it now, or do you want to hear it coming back from the commercial, going in? No. Or no. Now? Yeah. All right. $5 ho? Five dollar ho. Five dollar ho. Mm-hmm. Wait, how do you spell that again? Let me see F-Y-D-O-L-L-A. All right, good. Here we go. Five dollar ho. Singing? <laughs> Are you playing? Uh-huh. What do you No, play? I just sing. You I don't just play sing anything? and shake my ass. Tramp. Uh, yeah, I like tambourine. this. Like, uh, like uh, oh, you play the triangle like Tracy <laughs> from uh, the Partridge family? Yeah, it's good. It's like throwback uh, retro punk. <laughs> yeah, it's very Bow Wow Wow. Uh, Ooh, Drew. Oh, yeah. Not Bow Wow Wow? <laughs> Anderson's got a puss on over there. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, uh, well, Shawnee's not fourteen. <laughs> I, what what is a what is an early uh, punk chick? Uh, Joan Jett. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, Pat Benatar, all the way. Yeah. Hell is for children. Well, let me tell you something about Pat Benatar's <laughs> Hell is for Children. That is my new karaoke number. Oh, no. I'm not kidding. Don't do it to the world. I <laughs> sing Hell is for Children like nobody's business. All right, Drew, give us know? a snippet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Hell no, is yeah. for no, Children? Yes, we can, we can, uh, lay, that will be later in the show. And yeah. you know that they're little lies. Don't, don't encourage such a mess. mess. Do not hey. encourage them, Shawnee. You will learn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, I really, I mean, I, the audience, tears are coming from their eye, <laughs> eyes and, and blood from their ears by the time I'm done with Hell, with Hell is for Children. Justina? Justina? Jusina. Oh, me? Justina. Hi. Oh, no, that's, that'd be... <laughs> no tea there. Oh, there isn't? Oh, boy. Oh, so, ju- just... what? What is your name? Jazina. Jazina. What the hell's the matter with you? Jazina. <laughs> I, I don't know. I thought I saw a tea in there. I can't, uh, I can't take it, Adam! <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's going on? Um, well, a while ago, my brother was um, in his bedroom, and my best friend was spending the night. And, um, well, we heard some squeaking from his bed, and he started screaming out her name. And no. now my best friend's afraid to come over. No. He was she just, just screwing around. around. Yeah. Was she with you or with him? She was with me. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. He was, he was screwing around. Yeah. What's your question? Well, I don't know. Now she's afraid to come over, and, and that's not the only time it's happened. Yeah. <laughs> He's screwing around. He's a screwball, right? <laughs> not yeah. usually. How old is he? He's 28. Yeah. What does he ask her out of? How old is she? She's 19. That, Hold that's on. That's a weird behavior for 28 year old. 28. What's he doing at home? Um, yeah, yeah, first off. question. My family's kind of pitiful. He what? And I have a lot of people living at home that are older than they should be. He's pitiful? Is that what you said? Yes, he is pitiful. Okay. Wait, well. why do you, did you say you have a lot of people living at home? Well, a lot Family. of... Well, let's put it this way. I'm the youngest, and everyone older than me is living at home. Well, really? His, his pitifulness yeah. is a much bigger issue than his uh, screwing around. What's your nationality? Um, I don't know. I'm a lot of everything. I but, see. Yeah. Yeah. No predominant... Uh, I don't know. We're probably more Irish and Italian than anything. Really? Well, that's probably the Italian side that's still living at home. <laughs> What's he do for a living? Um, he lives at home. He doesn't have to work. Um, <laughs> actually, he was working at a Walmart recently. Oh, boy. Nice. Good times. Oh, gun, gun, yeah. Gun counter? Hey, yeah, he needs to get out of that house. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. And, hey, so, and so do you. you, you We're you, talking to her. Why don't we give her some advice? Get out of the house. 
Yeah, there you go. Then your friend can come visit you again. Exactly. As long as you don't start squeaking the bed and screaming her name. That whole uh, jacking off, yelling out someone's name business is just something from uh, bad 80s movies. But <laughs> No guy ever does that. Oh, actually and, doing it. Yeah, no guy ever yells, I'm coming, and no guy ever yells out the name of uh, some girlfriend. <laughs> you, you, listen, you're, you're tight-lipped. I keep my mouth <laughs> shut. I'm scared something's going to land in it. You know, you know what I mean? I don't want to taste myself. You know what I'm saying, Drew? Oh, yeah. You got him. Yeah. Oh, no. That's good. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> oh, distance yeah. thrower. Yeah, no, no. Don't stop. Yeah, baby. Come on now. Come on. Daddy's coming. Daddy's coming. Daddy's coming home. <laughs> well, that is true. I do do that. Well, let me tell you something about uh, semen flight. <laughs> At least we know you're practicing safe yeah. yet unsafe sex. Mm. It is, a, uh, it is a, a, a spin of the sperm roulette wheel every time you take oh, your penis I, in I, your I, own I, hand. A new man show bit here. It really is because sometimes... The stuff dribbles out like a bird just cramped on your belly. <laughs> and sometimes the stuff goes bouncing off the wall uh, behind your head. You just never know. Drew, how does that work? Do you well, know what I mean? I, I, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get clinical, clinical. Yeah. Do you know, you know what I mean? want to hear about the contractile force of the well, pubococcygeal muscle. I yes. had yes, a lesbian friend that told me that a woman can ejaculate yep. dynamically. Yep, yep. Quite, quite forcefully. How... How does that happen if you don't have another woman who, who understands the orgasm so the multiple orgasm so much she you know spends the time. Uh, what, what is her what question? Is <laughs> let me, let well, me. I never heard of a straight friend saying, you know, you can projectile orgasm just like a guy. Not everyone can. We we, we had long discussions can. about that in the show. Let me long tell you something about women in actually having a physical orgasm where something comes out of them. Ninety-seven percent of women can't do can't it. Do that. But the three percent who can are doing it for the other ninety-seven percent. But, but we, I mean, we've had a that, show. Where okay, keep going there, Drew. Well, I thought that was all you were going to say. All right, better just step right on the end and just start <laughs> rambling there. You're I'm very sensitive. A little point to make. That's all right. I thought you made your point. Go ahead and make your next point. All right, now go. Come right on, ahead big there, baby. Buddy. Go point ahead. was the three percent does it for the ninety percent. Yeah, I got that. Okay. Okay, just, you know, but does it feel trying better? Trying to finish off a little comedy there, but go, uh, uh, <laughs> go ahead, just keep going. I thought you was making a point. No, just, just uh, okay. You know. Let's talk about does a three percent who projectile does that? They do don't. They, they don't do it all the time. Anymore, and, they don't, and, they, and some of them claim it's, it's just a physical. We, we, we spent a phenomenon. whole. Sh- we spent a whole show interviewing just those women. And really? some of them said it was sometimes it was bigger when that happened. Sometimes it didn't make any difference, and it would just happen. Others claimed they had it all the time. Some it never happened. Really, it's just so I was obviously yeah. tempted it, to be enticed into and lengthy most, lesbian sex. And most and most of them <laughs> yeah. right, and most of them were not with oral sex. Remember, most yeah. of them were during intercourse. Uh, I don't I don't yeah. remember that part of it, yeah. but obviously with how the can lesbians, you tell really? If you're a lot comes out. Okay, Nicole. Well, I'm sure the guys love that. And they do the first time, but by uh, one thirty-five, yeah. it's getting a little <laughs> old. Nicole, uh-huh. hey goofball, what's up? You're fifteen. Okay, um, okay. Yeah. Like lately, I don't know. I've just like. Oh boy. Never mind. That's a damn lie, and you know it. <laughs> Nicole, do you have something to say, or is that it? Uh, no, never mind. All right, uh, baby. Okay. Well, keep oh, mom's, in, mom's in there. Oh, listen. Mm. Mom? Nicole? Is that mom? Yeah. All right. Oh, no, wait a minute. You want us to put you back on hold and uh, you get rid of your mom? What do you I mean... Uh, Nicole? Uh-huh. Can we put you on hold? Yeah. And, yeah. and then we'll get back to you? Uh-huh. Is mom, your, is mom your, will... Is your mom still in the room? Yeah. Can mom we, bringing you down? Yeah. Can we talk to her? Hello? Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. Oh, is this Nicole's mother? Yes. Hi, how are you? Hi. You have Hi. a dynamite young lady for a daughter? I'm sorry? You have a wonderful young daughter. She's called our radio show. Yeah, I was wondering where she was calling so late at night. Oh, I see. Now, where where do you guys live? San Pedro. Hell is Nicole's mom. San Pedro. That is uh, in the same time zone we're in, right? Yes, right. How old are you? Excuse me? How old are you? I'm, I'm not going to give you any information until I find out who I'm talking yes, to. Yes, that's oh, actually right. she deserves that. Yes, no, Absolutely. This is uh, Menachem Begin. No, no, no. No. This is uh, Loveline, the radio show. Okay. A, uh, You're on show. live radio now. Yes, right. Locally, you're on K-Rock. All right. We attempt to help uh, young people who have uh, questions about uh, sometimes intimate problems, but uh, other times just questions that uh, mostly have to do with uh, growing up and being uh, teenagers. 
You know what I mean? Same questions you had when you were 15, I'm sure. Uh-huh. So how old are you? Well, again, I'm not going to answer. I'm her parent. My age is, is, is irrelevant. You just sound really young. That's why. It, well, you know, what can I say? All right. Hey, honey. But I heard... I, I'm All right. Hey. I'm listening to you guys' show, and you guys should be ashamed of All yourself. All right. Well, can you do me a favor and blow me? Thank you. <laughs> old bag. Have fun, honey. <laughs> Please. Well, we know what her Just daughter's problem is. Come over here and blow me, Mom. <laughs> well, now, but here, here's oh, the problem. who cares? No, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. I don't care. If that daughter had My a... age is not relevant. <laughs> oh, just go blow me. Hey, look. Who cares? That's a compensation, though, See, for the fact women... that she had a baby when she was 15 or 16. She, she sounded it. like it, didn't yeah, she? Now yes. she's hell-bent on... Right. But now, if Nicole's problem was real, that mom needs to know what's going on with Nicole, because that's some <laughs> heavy... Well, didn't she start out saying, I really love it when... No, she has some... She didn't say it. I'm not going to repeat it here. What was on the screen oh, was some it's very, on. very heavy stuff. Well, here's and the here's the point. And if, if mom's busy moly. compensating and denying, she's going to miss this kid's need for dialogue. You Good. better be talking, mom. Well, let right? me let me tell you something. Or let her talk to someone else. Here's the deal: Nicole's uh, problems, and uh, poor Nicole is uh, sitting home with mom uh, next to the radio, listening to this. I'm I'm sure. Uh, Nicole, if you drink, now's the time. Now's the time <laughs> to have a shot. Nicole is uh, 15, uh, attracted to uh, older guys. Was that uh, the problem? And uh, in, into a few things with those uh, older guys. Much that older guys. 15 year old gals should not be into. Now, let's talk about the older guys that shouldn't be into it. Her mom would uh, like to turn a deaf ear to it, and uh, that's fine. And here's my point, Drew. I, I'd like to talk to people and see if we can't help them, but yeah. I'm not going to talk them into it. Yeah. So if they don't want any help or they want to, you know, go read the Bible and uh, lock the door, fine. Have fun. Enjoy. Well, uh, she won't be having fun. I'm going to be at the Super Bowl motocross drunk <laughs> on Saturday, <laughs> laughing my ass off while you try to raise your wild daughter. So enjoy. <laughs> we'll take ourselves a little break. We'll be back. Back in a minute. Hey, it is Love Line. I'm Adam Parola. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Shawnee Smith is our guest tonight. She's the uh, kooky one from Becker. 9.30, Monday nights, uh, CBS, year, uh, or I should say season uh, number three. When's that on? After uh, Everyone Loves Raymond? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, Monday night lineup there. You're but on nobody a- knows that Ted Danson actually got nominated, too, for a Golden Globe this year. Oh, he did? Best actor. Yeah, CBS doesn't want anyone to know, but I'm, I'm letting the cat out of the bag. <laughs> Are you being facetious when you say that? <laughs> and no, it's just bizarre, like, how little... Ten- attention that you maybe, know maybe the show is, Becker it, gets. Maybe CBS is the issue. Mm-hmm. We, the cloud we've been under all these years. Well, let me let me. Uh, Are you guys CBS? I don't know. Oh, Are we do. We work for CBS. Yeah. Oh, we do. All right. Well, that's why we don't get any attention. <laughs> right. Here's well, the thing, though. At least I got here. <laughs> let me tell you something about uh, this sort of uh, stealth TV show and radio show and all this stuff. Uh, there are plenty of TV shows out there that get a, a lot of s- attention. They get a spotlight. Some good. Some of them are good, like um, Sports Night or whatever. And they get a lot of press and they get a lot of talk and whatever, and then they're gone in three months and they're never heard of again. And there's a long list of these shows, and I can't remember them right now because they're only around for three months. And then there's shows mm-hmm. that are just around, and people are they know the name. But it's, they're not on the cover of TV Guide. You don't hear them talked about on Entertainment right. Tonight. They don't get much press. But here's the thing. I think that's good. Th- those, are, those are TV <laughs> well, shows that people know. like, not that people no. on TV like. I think a part you... of us are, are like a, a bit nervous if the cat ever got out that the show is on the air and stuff. Because we we're like are off in top ten. We're like the top three comedy. But we never, ever, ever get mentioned. But that's the point. If your viewers like it, who cares what people in TV think? No, that's not my point. Yeah, yeah. That's not my point. All right, what's your point? My point is I treat this show like an employee and the boss is CBS. And your office is very far away from the boss's <laughs> office. And he doesn't come to your side of the factory very often. Right. So and you that's just why work and work and never, work and work. And you'll never get fired because he doesn't know you're there. <laughs> As opposed to the guy who's always in the boss's <laughs> office, but is always giving ideas to the boss. Of the boss could not like one of the ideas and fire the guy. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's there's shows, and I don't want to compare you to um, Full House, but here goes. You know, there's a there's a lot of shows out there, like 
Like Full House, like Suzanne Summers and Patrick Devin. That show ran for like eight or nine years. No one even knew it was on the air. I think if someone would have found out it was on the air, it would have been canceled. I think if they would have went to that. This Shawnee's concern, see? I know. No, this. I think if someone would have found out that Full House, no, not Full House, but what the hell was that? Uh, maybe it was Full House. Just the nine of us. Whatever that Suzanne yeah. Summer, Patrick Duffy what was piece that? of, of just the TGI of us. Friday. No, not she's the sheriff. No, they found out about that and canceled. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is I have a theory step that by step. there's step, step by step. 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 Who step put, by so, step. Who put that in your ear, Drew? Somebody because that there. wasn't you. That was not me. <laughs> All right, step by step. The point Becker is, and step by step. I don't think ABC knew step by step was on the air. And for at least six of the eight years it was on, if they would have found out about it, someone would have canceled it. You see what I'm saying? But were they a top ten show across the world? I know you guys. Nation? You guys are actually a good show, so I, it sounds like I'm insulting you. All I'm saying is, is no, I, I hear your keep, point. Totally. Keep your low profile, make it to season number four, and laugh all the way to the bank with the right. syndication money. I hear you. I don't, do. That is a very valid point. Don't go. Uh, don't go into the uh, office of the programmer and start stirring things up. <laughs> He could focus his attention on you. Next thing you know, he decides he doesn't like the show and cancels you. That's what I'm <laughs> oh, saying. I should have kept my mouth shut this morning. That's right. The read through. Keep, keep a nice yes. <laughs> keep a nice show that the, even your own network doesn't know is on the air. Right. Yeah. Well, whatever. It's working. Whatever. You Why? tell Ted if he wins that go- Golden Globe to send an Indian up there to accept. I don't want to <laughs> see him up there. <laughs> Danielle. Yeah. You're 15. Uh-huh. Please don't be my sister. Is uh, Shannon? I'm guess, guessing you have a sister named Danielle. No, I do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You have a sister named Danielle. Yeah, yeah. Danielle. No, I do. <laughs> well, it just uh, all right. There we go. No, you must be John Francisco. Fan- <laughs> <laughs> You're 15. What's up? Um, I was raped three times over the summer, and ever since then, like, all I want is sex. I see. Three times. Yeah. Well, one of the times was, it was statutory, it was consensual and all, but it was statutory. How old was the guy? 21. I see. And uh, what were the other two times? Um, One of the times was also the same night with the 21-year-old, but the other one, I had to go to a... Hold on, same night? Yeah. All right, so you had sex with the same 21-year-old guy twice in one night? No, a different 21. No, there was a 16-year-old and a 21-year-old. Okay, so the second one was the same night with a different guy. Right. Well, it's a big how, uh, how was busy that, night for you. How was that rape, the second one? Because it, they put something in my drink. You were loaded, yeah. Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Jimmy put his uh, penis in a Snapple uh, that yeah. I drank once. Actually, That's right. That's right. Well, he is putting something in, his dr- in my drink. Yeah. One guy was named Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Probably was Jimmy Kimmel. And uh, what was the third instance of rape? I had to go to an um, institution because I tried to commit suicide. Uh What was the third case of rape? Yeah, that's what I'm getting to. Oh, at the institution? Yeah. Oh, baby. What happened there? A guy just ran in my room and pushed me down. Wow. And held my throat. Did did the, the hospital personnel find out about it? Yeah, I told. Good. And what'd they do to the guy? They kept him in the same place with me. They didn't wow. believe me. Uh, uh, they didn't believe you. Mm-mm. Awful. Hmm. I'm ready to do a little gambling on uh, young uh, yeah, Danielle. It's sort of, it, huh? it's kind of moot. I mean, she's into this, you know, trauma repetition compulsion. What happened, baby? Where's Daddy? I'm mm. sleeping. <laughs> sleeping? Yeah, I'm adopted. Uh huh. How old were you when you were adopted? Um. Well, I've lived with these people all my life, but I was three. They're three. My, they're really my aunt and uncle. Yeah. Okay. So when you when you when you're torn out of the family at three, that means there's some serious chaos going on yeah. there. My mom was a drug addict, drug addict yeah. like every drug. Yeah. Yeah. She was 15 when she had me. Wow. Right. Okay. So yeah, life's basically been a nightmare thus far, right? Yeah. Now, what are are you into substances? Um. Yeah. Yeah. We got to pick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we gotta what are you into? Um, pot, acid, E. Okay. Mm. Just, just pot, acid, and E, though? And baca. Oh, and baca? What's baca? Lee What's baca. baca. He's, he's running for sheriff out here. Well, alcohol. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, oh. hold on a second. Is that baca? 
Sure. We, we, what? We're out of it. We're going to get hip. Yeah. All right. We're going to take ourselves a little break. So. We're going to uh, get back with uh, Danielle over here and uh, sort out her miserable life after this. Love Line, fast growing outlaw radio show in Southern California. And the world. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the nation. All right. Yeah. I kind of kind of dropped the ball on that one. Shawnee Smith is our uh, guest tonight. She's from uh, Becker. The uh, Golden Globe nominated uh, Becker. Thank you. Ted Danson. Congratulations, Ted. 9.30, uh, Monday nights, uh, CBS. What, what is this? His, you know, 19th nomination? I mean, the guy's been nominated for a few Golden Globes in his day, hasn't he? Yeah. Well, I told him, like, his ass kissing is raised up now since he's been nominated. But if he loses, like, it's going to go down further than where it started. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> he, he has won a few times, hasn't he? Yeah, but I think he's been nominated a lot more times than he's... I don't know what it is, man. I think the guy is a brilliant actor, and and especially, like, the genre that he does. I don't I don't uh, see him on uh, the uh, talk show circuit too often. Am, am I missing you him, know, or am I, I right about that? Is he kind of know, a private guy? Man. I Like I said to him all the time, like, you should be on the cover of, like, you should be, like, doing sexy covers of magazines. And But didn't he go, go through all that? He sort of did that when he was younger. Well, you know, he, he had all those years on Cheers, and I think he's kind of yeah. been there, done that. But I yeah. think he would do it again. But I don't know, like, people around him are lying to him, saying people don't... He says to me, oh, they don't want me, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, how can that... Like, I just don't buy it. So, so whoever wants Ted him. out there, just give him a call and say Shawnee said to call. Well, it, it may be just that I haven't uh, caught him, but I don't... He seems to keep a fairly low profile for a guy who's fairly well-known and the star of a sitcom that's on prime time. I mean, maybe it's just uh, keeping with the pattern and theme of the whole show <laughs> that uh, he's getting passed over and not getting the recognition he deserves. But I don't see the guy on the magazine covers. I don't see him on The Tonight Show. I just don't see him around. Well, I don't... Would you like him here on Loveline? Because I'll talk to him. Yes. Okay. Well, that'll be our first test. You know, We'll see like if they're not asking or if he's turning them down. Well, I'm sure we were turned down by him. I know. <laughs> I know that for a fact. But I think he'd have a great time on this show. Well, we'd love to have him. So uh, when you see him, uh, when do you see him next? Tomorrow morning at 9.30. I'm oh, you, you can't talk to him tonight? <laughs> <laughs> You'll see him at 6.30 tomorrow morning? Yeah, that's a ways off. That's, uh, what are we, like seven and a half hours away? Uh, when you see him tomorrow, uh, tell him we'd love to have him on the show. I uh, will. Ted's a pretty cool guy. He seems that way, yeah. and uh, I like anybody I don't He's see too mind, much. Yeah. I well, like I like people I I like it's the the people I don't trust are the people that are uh, coming out with their own uh, waffle makers on the uh, <laughs> on on the uh, on the uh, hawk your junk channel and the people that are writing books that no one cares about and uh, that kind of stuff yeah like us Drew all right uh, Dan yeah like Drew Danielle yeah all right so you're 15 huh? you uh, you you've been getting raped quite a bit. The uh, summer chock full of rape. You, she was abandoned as a child. Yes, you come from this uh, horrible family. You're into substance abuse. And uh, where are you living now? Are you back home? Yeah. Okay. Well, I was in a hospital. I just got out in October, like the middle of October. Have you ever been involved in recovery at all? In what? Recovery? Drug addiction recovery? We'll, we'll take that as a no. Yeah. The, uh, in what? You, you really need to look into some recovery, right? Some addiction yeah. treatment. You yeah. need to do that. And realize that... And I was telling Ashanti during the break that what happens when somebody has the sort of usual fabric of uh, safety of the normal social structure ripped away and they are rendered completely powerless in some sort of traumatizing situation, the arousal of that etches into the brain a pattern that causes them to go out to try to master that by reenacting it over and over and over again. And so while this awful rape thing was you know, something you would ultimately avoid, the acknowledgement of the powerlessness is more painful than actually a pushing that away by trying to master it by repeatedly engaging in the same behavior. I'm sure she absorbed all of that, Drew. Yeah. Well, uh, like, simply put, like, if you follow your feelings and, and where, you're, where your feelings kind of naturally take you, you're going to, like, they're just going to kind of keep leading you down the same road. And if you, if you check out some maybe some recovery things, it might give you some different tools, which you'll feel totally weird at the time and, like, 
foreign and, and not as arousing as what you know, which is what you're right. repeating. And, and the arousal is where the attraction is, but you know you're that little voice inside you that goes, geez, why am I doing this? This is not right for me. Mm. Cool. That's your real instinct. That's really where you want to be. And the attractions and the arousals associated with that is all just side effect from having been traumatized so badly. Okay, well, I go to like three counselors right now. One's a drug addiction. Good. The other one's a rape crisis. Well, why don't you get with this? You've got lots of treatment at your disposal. Get with it. I'm bipolar. Look, no excuses. Get with it. Do the program. Follow direction. Okay, but see, I put myself in the places. I... Right. No. 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 That's what common to blame yourself. That again, it's avoiding that powerlessness. It's it's more less painful to take responsibility for these things that you had no control over. A guy ran into your room and you're in a hospital and raped you. Somebody put something in your drink and raped you. Well, wait a minute. She is taking responsibility for it. No. 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 It's it's. But it's not. These were random things that were not her responsibility. The point is rather rather than experience the powerlessness, which is the more painful issue, she'd rather say, "No, it's my fault." Right. I put myself there, and then you get this whole you know period of well let's work with her logic and say don't put yourself there anymore can you do that well it you're not thinking your mind's not functioning logically when your brain and this like feeling or sensation is overpowering especially when you're so young i mean it seems like until you get sick and tired of ending up in the same place enough are you willing to like do behave differently or try different things that are totally new that just aren't familiar like seems like human beings are creatures of habit and we like what's from what we know even if it sucks and it hurts okay but see you have to realize this is really hard for me the medicine that i'm taking none of it works for me yeah all right well why don't you talk to your counselor your 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 psychiatrist about that and see if you can get it adjusted well, we've been doing that, and nothing works. Well, listen, nothing's going to work if you just keep declaring nothing works. Right. I mean, here's the deal, because we're out of time, and uh, I'm going to close this up by saying this. Danny, I've talked to a thousand of you in the uh, five years I've been here, and the future is not bright unless you really make some effort to make some change. Going on instinct and just kind of floating with the flow, the way the wind blows going to blow you right into hell you understand yeah. you're going to have to work and it's sad not the way the wind blows you but the way every feeling in your body and mind is driving you to go easy baby sometimes it's getting a little cathartic for shawnee over here <laughs> no but, but what sometimes I'm, it's what true. i'm saying is is because of your past and i'm sorry it happened to you but it does happen to people you're going to have to work harder than most people in yeah. order to have the kind of life that they didn't seem to have to work so hard for. That's well put. It's going to be a full-time job for you to stay out of trouble, to stay straight, to not get loaded, to not get raped, to not get pregnant. It's going to be an effort. But you know what? You have no alternative. That is it. It's either that or be, you know, pregnant junkie at 16. Right. So you're in the hands of some people who can help you. Let them help you and work with it. That's it. It's going to be slow, but you're 15. You're young. You started early. You can still have a great life. All right. But you got to work. I mean, let me you know, this is the way life is in in many, many respects. I mean, there's some people that don't start off with all the advantages. Sometimes it's physical. Sometimes it's mental or emotional. And for those people where sometimes reading doesn't come easy to people, sometimes uh, now I'm getting cathartic. (laughs) Math doesn't come easy to some people. Some people have difficulty. They weren't, they're not the smartest. They're not the tallest. They're not the best looking. There's some people that uh, eat, eat uh, half a baked potato and put on 20 pounds. Those people, and then there's some people that uh, go to Carl's Jr., stick their head in the deep fryer and don't put on, don't put on an ounce. The people that put the weight on are going to have to work. They've got to work harder. That's it. It may, may, it'll probably probably make you a better person in many ways, right. but you're going to have to work at it. All right, Alex, I'm going to yeah. go home and jack off a nap after this, by the way. <laughs> Keep your mouth closed. Uh, oh, yes. Nice. Yeah, don't, need any, goggles. don't need any of my uh, seed planted in my own soil. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Alex? Yeah. You're 15. What's up? Um, it's like, I think I'm, I'm attracted to guys. But I want to be straight because all my friends are straight, you know? Right. It's like pressuring. Mm. Sure. I don't know what to do. Uh, why, mm. why do you think you're attracted to guys? What does because, that mean? Well, I just mean, hey, you know, have you ever had an encounter with a guy? Yeah. You have? Yes, I have. How old were you? I was 13. 
Yeah. How old was the guy? He was fifteen. All right. All right. All right. And uh, do you do you like have like a gay erotica you like to look at? Uh, I'm not sure. You're not sure. No. Nah. Well, those are the ones where the guys cornholing the other guy. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> One guy's wearing like a leather cap. Uh, and he's uh, cornholing uh, another young gent. You've seen those? Obviously, you have. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. It's, uh, it's art. It's really is what it is. It's, uh, I, don't, I don't look at his pornography. I look at his expression of art and love. Sure. <laughs> uh, popular at the motocross. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Alex. Yeah. You ever get on the internet and look at, uh, you know, guys doing stuff to guys? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's probably what you're into. Have okay. you been with a woman? Did it do anything for you? Um, no. No and no or no, no and, and no. You haven't been with a woman. No. Had no desire to. Right. All right. So you're gay. Drew doesn't really. Drew, what's what's? Vibe? I, I don't get the right. Getting like a bogus vibe. Yeah, here. definite bogus vibe. But having trouble answering the questions. Trouble, but but also no feeling. And this this is a very painful thing for a young guy to deal with. Which sure, is, getting in the ass. No, which is, gee, I, I want I mean, to be heterosexual. Hurts. I expect to be heterosexual. I'm ashamed of these these same sex feelings I'm having. I would oh, yeah. I want to wish them away. How do I deal with this? How? And most guys oh, at 15... So Anderson, it, put that on a cart, by the way, if you could, about uh, <laughs> Drew wishing he was heterosexual and wishing he wasn't attracted to men. Did you, yeah, go ahead and mark that one down. And, and most guys going, who, who are calling with that will call with, how do I wish that away? How do I make that go away? Mm -hmm. Because they still cling to a belief that they can. And just grappling with that is a very painful process. And what most... Uh, I recommend most... Uh, kids that age, whether male or female, dealing with same-sex uh, orientation, is get in touch with the Gay and Lesbian Youth Center in your area and deal with people who've been through this so you can get some, right. some support with what it's like as you sort of dig through this experience. All right. Well, that's what he should do, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. Uh, Jason. Yes. You're 16. What's up? Um, Adam, I just want to say that you're, you're a genius. Oh, thank you. And uh, I'm kind of worried about testicular cancer a little bit. I've kind of had like a I think on my I think it's called the vast deference from my learned health class. Yeah, why don't you go have somebody who knows the difference take a feel? Well, I'm. <laughs> well, let him finish, please, Drew. Sometimes it, it kind of feels like it's swollen a little bit, and then it kind of goes down. But it's just like really, really sensitive, kind of like really big in circumference, like yeah. a big cord running from my yeah. testicle. All uh, the way uh, now I can tell him what that is, but it doesn't make my different. My, well, go my, ahead, tell him what it is. Uh, some there's nothing to do with testicular cancer, right? Okay. You, you probably have epididymitis, which is inflammation of, of the of the <laughs> cap that sits on top of the testing. And the spermatic cord will thicken and get inflamed in reaction to that. But you need to see a doctor. I don't know why you're messing around with this on your own without letting someone take a look at it and treat it. Okay. All right. All right. All right, All right. All right there, Jason. All right. Later. All right. Yeah. Is easy. Well, Drew, don't, don't don't come down on the kid. <laughs> well, I get very frustrated with people, especially when he loves Adam so much. Yeah, he thinks yeah, I'm a genius. That's the thing. I think that's which, what which, him. which makes him a genius. <laughs> By the way, if any of you want to be labeled with the uh, genius tag, all you have to do is proclaim me a genius or savior, <laughs> and I'll immediately call. I'll l immediately label you a genius. You see how easy it is? Well, go ahead, Drew. You're my personal savior. You're a genius. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Did, did you want to finish that thought? N no. No, not the genius thought. The thought about uh, this man doing his own. No, I just in general, uh, it frustrates me when people uh, to do their own, I mean, f do their own care, you know, do their own health care. So what, what, are you, what are you waiting for? You have a problem. Good but but understand when you're a teenager and there has to do with your nether regions and you're a little bit tentative about having somebody take a look at that area you'd like to sort of suss it out for yourself like the time i lanced the carbuncle on my anus yeah well, you had no problem with your people look at what's a carbuncle big ass well, see i didn't know either <laughs> till i lanced it i mean i could probably guess but um yeah close your eyes are right, you picturing, you're picturing my anus <laughs> now picture a giant carbuncle on it <laughs> It, like, has arms and legs. and <laughs> Carbuncle's one of those words. It's like slinky. You know what it means just by the word. You know what I'm saying? Carbuncle, slinky. Everyone loves a carbuncle. <laughs> <laughs> it's carbuncle, it's carbuncle. For fun, it's a wonderful toy. For carbuncle. Yeah, it's fun for a girl and a boy. Jessica? Hi. You're 13. What's up, Toots? Um, okay, like, you're a god. <laughs> oh, you're a genius. Oh, you're a genius. <laughs> Very smart. 
Okay, well, I can't talk that loudly because, like, my parents are in the room. Mm. And they're, like, sleeping. We've had one parent encounter tonight. That was enough. That's okay. right. Yeah, and she would, like, freak out. <laughs> What's okay. your problem, baby? Um, well, like, people are, like, sexually harassing me and, like, like offering money to, like, give them BJs and Why? Like Why? Well, wait a minute. How much? Why? Five dollars. Why is this happening to you? <laughs> well, let the five dollar hoe take and slack at that one. Where did this no, come from? Like, I seriously take offense to it. Why? Yeah. Why did this happen to you? Why? why what are they? Where did that come from? Well, like I thought, like I could trust this like guy and like a what? Okay. Well, in the summer, like I did, and like I told this one guy because like I thought I could trust him and stuff. You told him what? That I gave these uh, two guys um, BJ's. I see. So the fact that you did that is something that sort of made you the object of these guys' ridicule, huh? Yeah, but I only told one person. I told yeah. not All right, well, you, he obviously did. For well, free? You, you gave these guys the BJs? Well, I like them. Oh, I see. So you give a freebie if you like the guy? <laughs> that's, that's pretty... Let aw. me tell you something about men. You tell one, they can't <laughs> wait to tell the next, tell the next, tell the next, tell the next. Yeah. I know. Well, now I realize that. Yeah, but that's, that's why the one that's wants to... That's why he wants... That's a way to learn that lesson. But imagine that's that's why he wants to know. Yeah. He wants to right. tell other people. He wants to gain stature by delivering the messages. Right. But l imagine how awful that would feel at 13. Yeah. Right? Your whole school is, is uh, you know, objectifying uh -huh. you and treating you like crap for something you... Of course, if it was a guy doing it, he'd be a hero. Uh, that's the beauty of that double standard. But listen. You're a genius. Thank you. Jessica, <laughs> mm -hmm. here's the deal. Uh, the good news is there's probably plenty other uh, gals at the school have been handing these out, too, if I know, uh, if I know uh, America today. <coughs> so it's not like you're the only one who's done it. Oh, my God. Okay, my brother's listening. <laughs> okay, but, oh, boy. Okay. That's going to no, kill no, his jack for the Is night. he older? Can he kick some... No, he knows. How old is he? Sixteen. <laughs> we'll have him take care of the guys. No, 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 no. Listen, <laughs> Jessica. Yeah, <he> would. <laughs> Jessica. Yeah. Listen, uh, all you have to do is not respond, and it'll go away. Yeah, he's very right. Very shortly. He's okay, right. Adam. Yes. You're all over my nose back. Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> mm -mm, this I'm is the best kidding. day of my life. <laughs> and my is my name on your notebook? Yeah, Adam, it's an actual love line, and you and Dr. Drew are, like, all over it, and, like, oh, my God, I love you so much. Wait a yeah. minute, wait a minute. What what kind of notebook? Peachy folder or the blue denim kind? No, no, it's a big one, and it's, it's you are the only person in it. Yeah, how do you spell my last name, huh? Uh, it's, it's on my password also, and my, my uh, it's messenger is Adam C's Jaggy. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, what password? What's a password for, for the computer? Um, Adam 3636. Oh. Nice. <laughs> and, and now, is my last name on your notebook, too? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me do you, you spell it C-O-R or C-A-R? Because a lot of people misspell it. Yeah, see, it's C-A-R. Oh. A lot of people that's misspell what I meant. it. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. And you got it C-A-R? Yeah, that's what I meant. O-L-L-A, right? Mm -hmm. right? Put some hearts by it, right? <laughs> oh, I will. Yeah. And I have a, the picture, like, it's like a passion picture, and it has a kiss on it. Like. What's a passion picture? I don't know. What's don't, a passion picture? I don't know. It's on your website or something like that. On your website? I don't know. No. <laughs> what website? <laughs> Whose uh, website? I don't know. Some, like, the one you have to pay to see. <laughs> no, I don't know. I know official or something. My friend Sasha called because she's bulimic and she told you to say hi to me. And you did. And I was like freaking out that like whole week. Okay, babe. Well, let's get back to the oral sex prom. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Now, uh, listen. What they all say. Here, here's the deal. These are... Uh, these guys are like seeds, and they need watering. And if you don't water them, they'll never they grow. They dry up. They right. dry up and blow away. So just That's right. just well, keep I mean, walking. Watch it with the references. Then. Yes, <laughs> blow away. They uh, they'll just <laughs> just keep walking and just keep looking for it and just stare at the name of your God and Savior, which is on the front of your notebook <laughs> as you walk. Yeah, it is. And, and hold it next to your bosom as you walk down the hall and and, and gain strength oh, from that. Do you? Uh -huh. Good, good. Hey, and, um, gonna... and I will always be with you. Uh, is it right if I visit you? Yes. I'm coming down in February. You're going down on in February? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to see you with Sasha, and we're making a movie for you. Okay. Uh, where are you Where are you calling from? Washington. Okay, because uh, well, you're going to be 14 in February? Because 13 is a little... Uh... <laughs> when are you going to be 14? Uh, <laughs> October 27th. All right. Well, Don't listen, I'll, water I'll... the plant. I'll uh, I'll make an exception just this one time. Thank you. You I love you so much. All right, Jessica, you come visit us when you come down here. Okay. And bring that notebook. You're in City, right? Yes. Bring that notebook with you, would you? Mm hmm All right. Good times. I'm gonna make a second one. All right. Now listen. Don't um, don't give oral sex to anybody. I won't until, I'll until you see me. Okay. <laughs> well, no, I don't mean I don't mean she was gonna perform on me. I just meant 
in that time period. You're trying to have a He's positive. He's just trying to set goals. A positive influence over the young lady. Yes. That's right. Finally. Right. I'll tell you, uh, being on someone's notebook means you've arrived. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> I really feel good about that. Because I remember... Didn't you get that when you were 13? When I was 13, people had Jethro Tull on their uh, notebook and... Cat uh, Stevens. <laughs> no, that's when you were 13. <laughs> Now, they had, like, Paul and uh, Zeppelin and uh, Aerosmith, and that's what they would write. And then once in a while, you might get, like, a chick with a uh, Leif Garrett or something like that, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to think of my time what that was. Well, you went to a different kind of school no, than Stevens I did. You had, there. like, a Bell Abzug uh, written on your <laughs> on your notebook. Then she drew, I was ahead of your crowd you yeah, ran with, yeah, right? Yeah, she was. All right. Uh, Jasmine? Jasmine? Yeah. Hi. You're 20. What's up? Um, can you hold on a second? All right, we're going to put you on hold anyway. We are going to put you on hold. We'll, okay. we'll take a little break, all right? Okay. All right, baby, hang we'll on. Maybe his parents are hanging out with them. That's good. Yeah, people can't talk <laughs> tonight. It's great. Like, they're all call they're all calling, and the warden is coming down mm, the hall. Quality time. Shawnee Smith is our uh, guest tonight. She's a uh, delightful uh, young gal. Really, Consistent Jimmy, applause. Jimmy was right about you. He had a good, he had a good feeling about you. <laughs> She's from uh, Becker. That is uh, 930 on uh, Monday nights at CBS. Don't tell anyone about it. Yes. They're keeping a low profile and sliding <laughs> right under the radar. Don't blow our cover. We will uh, We will take a little break, and we'll be back with Jasmine after this. It's Loveline, man. For all that Drew over there, Shani Smith is our guest tonight. She's from uh, Becker. She plays uh, Becker's uh, assistant at the uh, office there, the cantankerous uh, Ted Danson. Who's up for another Golden Globe, by the way, but uh, nobody cares. <laughs> Ted will be on the show next week, though, when uh, Shani weaves her magic tomorrow morning by convincing him to come on the show and make a rare appearance. Right? Yeah. It, yeah. it shouldn't take much. A couple of sexual favors. 9.30 on who's, uh, who would be handing, who, who would the favor be? <laughs> would that be you providing the favor? <laughs> no, I let him guy. give me a couple favors. and Right. It's... Easy. 9.30, uh, Monday nights, uh, CBS. You can also find uh, Shani and her band, uh, Fight Ho. Fight Ho. Fight Ho. Fight Ho. That would be, uh, <laughs> that would be uh, Sunday night at the House of Blues, 9.30 too, right? Right. Or on the website. You can see pictures, reviews, gigs. Really? Yeah. And I don't it, have a book, but I got a website. FightAllaho.com? <laughs> uh, www. FyDollarHo.com? Yep. No, spell that one more time. F-Y-D-O-L-L-A-H-O. One word. One word. All righty. All right there, Drewski. I know there's some, uh, I think there's some, like, uh, unofficial uh, Loveline uh, websites and uh, fan them, yeah. things Apparently. and uh, stuff like that, but I have never seen one of them, ever. And I have no idea where they are, how you find them, or, or what pictures are on there, or what kind of lies they're uh, telling about us. <laughs> Jasmine? Yeah. So you're 20. Uh huh. You can talk now. Yeah. All right. Um. I have a well, it's not a really a problem, but I'm attracted to older married men, and I want to know why that is. Well, that sounds like a problem. Daddy. To me. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Daddy. Daddy. Um. He's he's home. Yeah. You love him. No. He didn't pay enough attention growing up. Or too much. Alcoholic? Mm, what, not really. What daddy do? Uh, has his own business. Yeah. Mm. What does that mean? Not around. Not really. Mm. I'm not too close. How come? I don't know. We don't get along. How come? Oh, leave her alone. See, see, we get well, that. how much silence can we tolerate on this show? <laughs> you can't tolerate much. Well, for Christ's <laughs> sake. She was. She took a breath. She's breathing. All right, Jasmine, how come you didn't get along? Um, I don't know. Just, just because. Okay, hold on. Uh, where's my Wait, scratch that, that. pad? Just uh, because. You said because? Yeah. All right, true. You satisfied? Yeah. All right, I think we, we now have enough it. information well, that we can... He doesn't really approve of my friends or anything I do, and I'm not... Um... You kind of want to piss him off, though, don't you? I'm sorry? You sort of want to piss him off, don't you? No, I see well, where you're going with this. like everything I do does, anyway. Right. Well, you're not going to disappoint him Magically. by not disappointing right. him. Yeah. yeah. You're angry at him now, right? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. not... Okay, I'm I'm, I'm, can you move out of the house? No, not really. Why? 20. 
Uh-huh. 20. Why not? Just because of cultural differences. Where are you from? Um, not from here. I, I was... All I right. grew up here, oh. but All I right. wasn't hey. born. Can't. Wait, wait, wait. Where were we born? You weren't born here? Yeah. I see. Where were we born? Oh, shot. Not born here, right? <laughs> oh. In um, Eastern Europe. Oh, you're so... Drew, you're so lucky that Drew asked you where you were born because I was so close to hanging up on your boring ass. So <laughs> European family, it's Jesus European family, do tend to be very, very tight Good. and boring. enmeshed. Good. Stay home and live with Dan, date 50-year-old guys. <laughs> Look, you, you're pissed, whether you realize it or not. You need some nourishment that helps you individuate and be a separate whole person and that you're not getting it from your family. See about moving out of the house. Could you do that? <laughs> Did your dad your dad wouldn't care. Just move out. All right, baby. Good times. Boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> she was very forthright. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you. What, she must have been some sort of auctioneer. Ugh, I Jesus assume they're Christ. like 13, 15, but she's 20. Like, she's 20. Who cares? And, Get listen, out. Date who you she, want. If you want to give those older guys the pleasure, then... She, she's angry at everyone. Listen, all you a-holes. <laughs> I understand you're mad at the world and every male's daddy and uh, you got a problem except for you don't have a problem but you want to call but you don't want to talk about it. Screw you. <laughs> Go rot in your own hell. I don't want to really talk feel. to you. Don't call this show, you idiots. <laughs> if you can't talk, if I'm asking you if there's cultural problems about uh, where your family's origin and I ask you where you're from, where you're from and your answer is not from here, <laughs> blow me. Get rid of you assholes. Don't call the show. Mindy? Yeah. You're 17. Yeah. I've had it up to here with you already. <laughs> what do you want? What's up, Mindy? Um, well, see, when me and my boyfriend have sex... Yeah. 14. Um, nice. All right, you're back. You're back in my good graces, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, he pulled out this one time, and I looked down there, and his balls, like, shrunk. They were, like, shrunken. They pull up, like landing gear. That's yeah. right. <laughs> That's called the cremasteric response. Yeah. They want to be, they be pre- pre- protected during the sex. They some, don't some, get guys, some guys, this is a oh, question. I'm going to cremasteric. Oh, I'm going to. Cremasteric. There's a period of uh, the dinosaur evolution. Right after the Bronze Age, it was a cremasteric. It was Jurassic, cremasteric. <laughs> then the bronze. What's it called? Cremasteric. Cremasteric. Oh, excuse me. Hey, uh, Mindy. Uh huh. You ever watch those nature films? You see where the shark attacks and that little membrane goes over the eyes? The eyes roll back. You know why? It's so the shark doesn't hurt its eye when it's eating something. And that's what the nuts do. They don't want to be injured during sex. Flopping Baby, around. don't look. <laughs> and here's... Uh, we get this, I get My question. nuts are long. I get going sexually. I get wedged in an asshole. You're long in the nuts? Yeah, I'm long in the nuts. Short in the penis, long in the nuts. I get going fast enough. It has a sort of pendulum effect. Yeah, I thought it was like Lucky piston. you. <laughs> well, they yes. were like slaps really back and small. forth. Like they were like the size of like a little bigger than marbles. Yeah, nice. it, it happens. Well, it, and we often get a, I often get called a, a question to these colleges I go and speak at by guys whose testy sort of rolls up into the inguinal canal, like it gets up into where the body joins the leg. Yeah, and they actually feel it suck up into there. But and that's, that's not the, what this is. It, it can do that, and that's part of the cremasteric response too. And when guys ejaculate, some guys get one side or the other where that will roll up. There He's like fine, Minnie. Hey, some guys uh, have to push it back down. What's uh, I'm more concerned with the part about him pulling out and you being 14. Well, I didn't want him to right. cut me. Yeah, oh, but you, okay. You, oh, Mindy, right. you, well, uh, <laughs> enough said. Mindy, you can still get pregnant without the pulling. E- even though he pulled out, you can yeah, still get on. pregnant. She thought I was concerned about the fact that, that he, he pulled, pulled out. out. Yeah, I know. Yeah, how come he didn't just come in you or on you or something, you know, <laughs> up you? I'm very concerned about the She's fact like, that I he pulled out. She's like, I closed my mouth. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> well, I didn't want him to cut <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear? You want? Yes, that is our. That is the IQ of our listeners in a nutshell. That is the answer. <laughs> no I'm intended. more concerned about this 14 year old who's having sex with you and pulling out. Response: <sighs> Well, I didn't want him to come in me. All right. That concrete. That's what I like. Hey, Mindy, uh-huh. listen here, goofball. <laughs> You're going to be uh, pregnant by your 15th birthday. Do you understand that you can get pregnant even though he pulls out? I'm not worried about it, M- Mindy. Yeah, I'm on birth control. All right. Well, well what are you taking? Huh? The shot. Depo-Provera. Uh, yeah. who, who put you on that? My mom. Wow. Boy, <laughs> that's a real hillbilly move there, boy. My mom was like a hippie. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's great. What about, like, does no one worry about STDs at 14? Or 
You know, the fortune are, are, are absolutely not going to get us here. <laughs> They're impervious. Yeah, impervious. Yeah, <laughs> they, they have a special uh, barrier. To, we're trying to figure out what that barrier is. Is that her yeah. pervious or impervious? Yeah. Or? Man, I'll tell you, this, this boyfriend of hers really hit a gold mine. Hippie mom shot her up <laughs> yeah, with the depot, right. and now he's just humping Woo-hoo. away. Hey, Go to, mom. Need to get a condom. You still can get STDs, of course. Yeah. Oh, Dude. yeah. Dude. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Uh, you know what's interesting about that uh, cream hysteric response? And I think that's the Nothing. same thing we're talking Nothing. about. No, no. The sack skin actually gets 200 times thicker. The Dartos tunic. Is that what that pulls is? In. Yeah, it pulls in. But, I mean, it seems like it... It becomes the tough as a buffalo hide. <laughs> it, it, but, I mean, it goes from this long, elastic, elongated origami yeah. type th- uh, type substance to this uh, thick, very yeah. thick it, it goes skin. From, yeah, it's like a tissue paper to like the, the surface of a no, of, it's of goes, a triceratops. No, no, it looks like a looks like a, a squirrel's brain. Yeah, is <laughs> uh, attached to the other side of your Johnson. Look at the brain. It's like a, wa- a walnut-sized brain. Is yeah. it that? And the skin goes from paper thin to like light coming through it thin to super thick. Mm-hmm. That's kind of hot. How does that work? That is the darto. The uh, magic of the darto's tunic. Where else is your that skin is some get thicker? Male. Yeah. Oh, stuff. How about that? <laughs> I heard you give, cuss. Give me the, give me the, now yeah. listen. That book doesn't illustrate. <laughs> no, I'll, sh- yeah, sh- I'll show you the. This. Yeah, but it's not going to explain how it works. It's just going to show me a guy's It'll nuts. It'll help you understand it. I don't want to see Well, it must nuts. thicken up to protect the sperm, That's right? right? Well, it protects the no, not the sperm, but the factory. The factory, yeah. I mean, yeah. those future babies. Yeah, it's like when they. You know, it's like putting. You some, know what's crazy is that each one of us are is is the winning sperm of like how many billions. Right? Like more Shawnee's people than quite, on the quite planet. A, quite a, quite a... Uh, esoteric. Yeah, esoteric. You want to get Eddie, high Eddie. after the show? <laughs> we can really freak ourselves out. I'm still recovering from the years. on TV, man. <laughs> Me too. Me, the sperm. <laughs> the one freak. sperm that lived... The one Let's sperm... Let's get high ...is on... fought his way through. ...a show with the... With the dude, <laughs> Sammy, who owned the bar, man. Bro. Uh-huh. All right. We will uh, take ourselves a break. <laughs> We'll be back, Shawnee Smith. You got to pee, oh, don't you? That's we're not taking a break. Yeah, what are you so early for? It's four minutes early. <laughs> four minutes early. Let me break. All right, let's break. Let's I got to break. Pee. I got to pee. Let's How go. dare you, let's Anderson? Go. What do you want? We just confuse everyone every night. I break late every night. Now I'm trying to break on time. So shoot right, me. Let's pee. Let's You're go. always complaining. I don't break on time. Aren't we supposed to break at uh, thirty-eight? Thirty-eight. Yeah. Oh, it's not thirty-seven. Yeah. What is it, Anderson? What is the official time we're supposed 38. to break? Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. And you worry about a chick taking a breath. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, you want plugs for the show, or are you okay on your own? You so. mean Becker nine thirty Monday nights? No, CBS. I was I was talking more CBS, about the House of Blues show. www.fightalaho.com House of Blues Sunday. Yeah. Night nine thirty. Yeah, you want me to give those plugs yeah, or not? Yeah, please. All right. You're a genius. All right, we'll be back. The parole is Dr. Drew. Shani Smith is our guest tonight from Becker. CBS nine thirty Monday nights. Golden Globe nominated Becker. Well, the, actually, the actor plays Becker will be on the show tomorrow night, right? <laughs> you talk to Ted for us. I'm going to get Ted here. Tell him uh, we're fans. We like to see him. Yeah. Seems like a laid back guy. What day uh, What day do you guys film? Tuesday. So your schedule is uh, you have like the table read on like Wednesday or something. Uh-huh. And then it's uh, it's a good life. It's a that, tough life over a half hour. sitcom life, right? Yeah. It's I mean, like another universe from an hour show. The only, uh, I mean, the tough days are the tape days and the day before the tape day. Yeah. But there's a couple of easy days in there, too, right? The table read day is a pretty easy day, right? Yeah. Well, if you do any, like, one film any day on a half-hour show is not, like, even film day. Especially when Andy Ackerman's directing it. Does Andy Ackerman do Becker? Uh Uh-huh. Who's Andy Ackerman? He did Seinfeld. Oh. So, what does that mean? It means he's fast. Oh, really? (laughs) Uh-huh. That's good. So, how long's the tape day for you? It's like eleven hours. Well, that's a pretty long day. Yeah. But I mean, uh, table read days a couple hours, right? Table reads like an hour. Hour. You so know. that's uh, that's Wednesday. That's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are like nine thirty to four thirty. I mean, just kind of just kind of walking around though, right? <laughs> yeah. Like they call you when they need you, right? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, it's a good gig. Yeah, it's a bit like I w- we were having lunch today after the table read, and I was looking around the table. I'm like, it's like I have two bands. I got my band, and then I have like 
my cast of Becker. Yeah. And it's kind of like, I mean, half hour comedy is a bit like having, like music, you know, it's, you, you work off each other, it's fast, you rewrite it every day, you fine tune it, and then you like perform it for a live audience. How much input do you have in the uh, writing? Oh, as little as possible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're so lucky. <laughs> and thank God you have people to hand you stuff that's not garbage. Yeah, those writers are um, re- were pretty spoiled. I don't yeah. I don't know if I well leave in Las Vegas was pretty amazing. But if you think of all the hours we've we've put together on three seasons of Becker of half hours, it like blows away any two hours of movie I've ever done. The writing's right. like but that you, good. You, you've done some pretty crappy movies. Too, uh, well, crappy. yeah. <laughs> hey but man, it, I did the Blob. Oh yeah, Screw you did. You. <laughs> you did. You did the Blob, really? Yeah, the you, remake, you, of course. You did the one uh, that came out like 15 years ago, Blob, or is there Shut another up. Blob? There was a remake, yeah. Well, there was, the, there was a remake of the Blob that came out in the 60s, right? Oh, uh, was that the second one? Well, what the, did Steve McQueen do? Well, there was... Early there, 60s. There was a, there was Apparently, a, I really researched this Yeah, movie. there was a Blob <laughs> in the 60s, right? And then there was a remake in the uh, mid-80s or somewhere around, around there. And then they had a third Blob? No. <laughs> Who decided that was scary, by the way, the blob? You know what I mean? It sounds like uh, your, your fat aunt from uh, <laughs> Poughkeepsie came to stay the weekend or something at the blob. That doesn't instill a lot of fear in people, does it? No. Oh, what is it? Yeah. Hey, what do you mean, what How is it? How about the movie blob, poster huh? in, in Mexico? El blob. El blob. <laughs> Emily? Yeah. You're 16. Yeah. What's up? Well... Um, I start, like, getting horny at, like, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and it go- goes on to, like, at 10 o'clock at night. Nice. Woo! Where were you when I was in high school? <laughs> and, uh, do you have a boyfriend? Nope. I'm like, and this is a problem because... It's annoying. It annoys me. And what do you... What, how does it annoy you? I, it just... I get... It just is annoying to me. I, it, it bothers me. Hold on. Why? I can grab my pad again. <laughs> how, how's it annoying to you? It's just annoying. Is that anything? <laughs> okay, I, remember I, I, that. I gotta find a pen. Because I, there's nothing I can do about it. I, I see. But it, it, is it to the point where you can't get your homework done because you're so distracted? Do you do you constantly masturbate? No, I never... You rub up against guys in the hallway? No. You never masturbate? Uh-uh. Why? It, it just does nothing for me at all. Yeah. Well, you got to do it to get something. You see the difference between men and women? <laughs> yeah. Women are so stupid. They're like, I'm starving. I'm starving. I'm starving. Why don't you eat something? No. No, never. <laughs> it does nothing for it me. Does nothing it for doesn't me. do anything That wouldn't for do me. it. <laughs> what do you mean? I think it would. I think a big pizza would probably help. No, no. No, no. <laughs> no it wouldn't do it. That's too weird. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I can't go to that pizza place. That place in myself. Not no the place where they make the pizza, but the, but the place in myself where <laughs> I, I eat the pizza. <laughs> I have to go to that place. I can't find that place. I have to light some candles. I can light some candles. I can get in the tub. I'm going to talk about this with somebody. <laughs> then I might be able to eat the pizza, but it still would be weird. Yeah, you understand why, why women are such a pain in the ass? She's horny. She refuses to masturbate. And will not even consider it. What is no, wrong? I, no, I've tried it. It just doesn't work for me. Well, how long did you try it for? I try, I've tried it on several occasions. It just I, I doesn't get me. I don't seek, get pleasure from it. Hmm. Like... Have you been with a man? Yeah. And did you get pleasure from that? Yeah. And did you have an orgasm? Yeah. Wow. Through intercourse? Yeah. Oh, oh. baby. Wow. Sixteen. Sixteen. 16. 16. And where is this uh, man? Oh, I, I just... I, I was abused when I was a child. I don't know. Are you sexually abused? Uh-huh. Ah. Uh-huh. This is that. I, right. this is that. I was raped for three years by my older brother. Well, just uh, three years? Yeah. Okay. Well, what happens then is that, you, like we talked about earlier about people... Hold on a second. By your biological older brother? Uh-huh. You mean somebody abused him. Oh, okay, but hold on. You you mm-hmm. had sex with your biological uh, older brother? Well, not by choice. No, no, I don't want to mean... It's not your fault. Uh-huh. But what I'm saying is, is for three years, you had intercourse with your older brother. Uh-huh. And how old were you when this started? Nine. And uh, how old was he? Uh, eleven. Mm-hmm. Oh boy! And uh, what how is? How does a how do a nine and eleven year old? What's he doing? That's the point. For the eleven year old who initiated this to know how to do this, he had to have been sexually abused by an adult. Yeah. Or or another child who been sexually abused. What's your abused. brother's story? I don't know. He's asleep in the room next to me. <laughs> uh, right. I still live with him. Nice. I see. And what's what's the family story? Nothing. My parents have been married for 20 years. And did they ever find out about this? I just told her mom in November. And how did she take that? Uh, she just thinks he... 
Well, that's about as far as it went. <laughs> did, did, she already, did she already know he was messed up? Um, no. Did, but he's always been physically abusive. Did anybody uh, work on getting some treatment for you guys? No. She's not, she, she, he doesn't know that I even remember. Yeah, but your mom knows now, and so it's about time you guys get some professional help. Because this is, what happens, again, as we talked earlier, is people getting these repetitions where having been highly aroused in a, oh. in a you know, powerless yeah. situation, yeah. you go out and try to reenact Jesus, those things. The other baby. thing that, is that your, all your feelings become sort of sexualized, and that's why it's so distracting to you. Everything becomes converted into sex. Yeah, that's all I think about. My friends get so annoyed. Hey, yeah, uh, listen, that. Emily, uh. um, this is not the kind of thing that's going to be able to be swept under the carpet uh. psychologically. Uh -huh. you Biologically. Will, you will have to mm -hmm. either deal with it in, in counseling, or it will be with you and run and be the guiding force in your life for your entire life, whether yeah. you know it or not. You really think so? Yes. I ab yes. Absolutely. I don't now. think so. I know so. Really? Yeah. Yes. I've, put, I've been put on medication because I thought I was, like, depressed. Well, you probably were, yeah. but be that as it may, you've got some serious sort of um, dynamic uh, issues. I'm sorry there. this happened to you, but it has to be dealt with. And your brother needs to be looked at and evaluated as well because this is the kind of guy who could do a lot of damage to other kids. Everybody thinks he's normal. He's going to the Air Force Academy. Oh. Good. He's going to be yeah. in charge of our government. Well, he will. They 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 don't not they don't promote you from uh, from private to in charge of government for at least eighteen months. So we don't have to worry about that. It makes me nervous. Yeah. yeah well, thank God he'll have a gun in his hand. Uh, hopefully he'll get hit by some friendly fire or something. Yeah, we I just have... hope he kind of crashes on the airplane. Nice. That's that's well, 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 wait yeah, a minute. Wait a minute. That stuff costs taxpayers a lot of money. Oh. Let's hope he's stabbed in a bar. Okay. okay well, what about please. the eleven-year-old that airplane? started this million-dollar I mean, like... aircraft? Like, what about that? I mean, it, there's not many just purely evil 11-year-olds that like to rape their sisters, right? Like, what happened to him? What started it? I don't know. We had, I think he found a book or something. About no. It, but I don't no, know. And, unless it was one of those books that was, you know, possessed by spirits. I, 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 I like, I never really thought about it. I, don't, I honestly don't. Where, where, Somebody where, said like, I wonder who did it to wh him that up? he's never going to talk about. What's up with your dad? He's completely normal. Is, is, he a, very is he in the Air Force? No. Is he a very strict guy? No. What's he do for a living? He works at a hospital. Mm, what's he do there? He's in charge of materials. I see. The fabric, paisleys, uh, things like that, yeah, corduroy. Like x-ray machines. And I see. And All right. Maybe he got a little dose of radiation or did no. something to his brain and he did something weird to the kid. <laughs> All right. Listen, Emily, uh -huh. you, you, you got to talk to your mom and tell her, here's what you have to tell your mom. I know this is painful. I know it's not something you want to hear, and I know it's something you wish would go away. But help. you know what? Yeah. It needs to be addressed. Yep. And unless, if mm -hmm. it's not, if you don't address this, and if you don't help me address this, it, you are being negligent yeah. as a parent. I, I mean, agree. It is. It is. It is. You might as well give you a, a handgun and tell you to, a, mm -hmm. and a flask and, of and a, who knows what Jim Beam and tell you to go out in the woods and go yeah. jogging. The older brother <laughs> may abuse other kids. And Adam, the, the radiation exposure, everyone knows that makes you grow into a giant. Oh, oh, not a molester? <laughs> no. That's right. You're so right. Steven? Hello? You're 15? Oh, uh, yeah. What is up? I'm sleepy. Um, Wake up, buddy. Yeah, I'm up. It's been on hold for 90 minutes. <laughs> oh. You're my shaver. Oh, really? Yeah. You're a genius. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you shaved your pubic hair? Uh, yeah, and I got, like, pimples. I like, see. You know, ingrown hair oh, and uh, folliculitis. I know what you do for that. What do you do for that? It's, uh, oh, what's it called? It's the stuff in a blue bottle with a gold top razor. Yeah, you know what, what you it's no, it? no. You know what it's called? It's called m ten skin. Ten skin. Yeah, T E N D S K I N. Yes, true. Was about now. Why to spit do you know out. about it? Because I get a I get a neck rash <laughs> down here. Well, on my neck. That's why they call it the neck rash. <laughs> that stuff really works. And it works. Uh, works pretty good. You put it on your uh, vagina area. Um, I try to keep away from there, but um, it sometimes wanders. It's hard, yeah. <laughs> Difficult. Sometimes it, I just can't stop myself from tingling all over. It drips from your nipples. <laughs> Gets down there. Nice. <laughs> well, it doesn't start all the way up there. Tell Ted we'll treat him with more respect. So he working to get <laughs> working to get the ten skin. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't know the stuff. All it, this is www.tenskin.com. Oh, with the computers already. <laughs> people, some people like to leave the house on occasion. <laughs> Stephen. Yeah. You shaved how long ago? Like two weeks ago. Okay, mm -hmm. just give Why'd me some time. Why'd you shave your pubic hair? He's fifteen. He's full of piss and vinegar. Just for fun. Just uh, warm water. 
clean, maybe you know, yeah. endometrial scrubs, Pfizer No, I'm telling you, this ten skin right. works yes, like the, magic. Listen, 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 goofball. Out. The ten skin works if you're going to constantly shave an area. If you shave it and it was two weeks ago and you're not going to shave it again. It's right. not going to do anything then for you. Then you better just scrub hard. Yeah, just just ride it out. The hairs will grow in. You'll be fine. Yeah, we'll scrub. All right. We're going to uh, take ourselves a break. We'll be back after this. All righty. Well, there you go. Another fantastic show. I want to thank Shawnee Smith for coming in. You can uh, see her and her band, Fidalo, down at uh, the House of Blues on the uh, Fabulous Sunset Strip Sunday night, 930. Then the next night. You can uh, turn on the TV at the same time, 9.30, and uh, see her on Becker. Right? Perfect. Perfect. You're a genius. Oh. <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you very much. All righty, uh, y'all. Thanks, uh, Sarah and Anderson. Uh, yeah, except we'll be back tomorrow night. All right. Wise With ass. Ted. With Ted Danson. <laughs> so, until next time, Sam Crawford, Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Same sex feelings I'm having. I would. Oh, I yeah. want to wish them away. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.